Welcome to CVF Gathering. My name is Stephen Porter and I serve as the coordinator of global missions for the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. And in that role, I have the joy of helping lead and cast vision for field personnel serving in over 20 countries in the world, doing incredible work, cultivating beloved community because the Father created all things good and bearing witness to Jesus Christ because the Father sent the Son uh, to redeem all things. And finally, seeking transformational development because the Father and Son sent the Holy Spirit to renew all things. And as Fellowship Baptist, we get to become part of the mission of the triune God in the world. What an incredible opportunity. And we focus on three contexts, global poverty, global migration, and the global church. I'm so excited about our lineup tonight as we continue to explore this theme of thankfulness in CBF gatherings. Uh, as we enter this season of thanksgiving in our own culture here in the United States. And what a joy it will be to hear from Caroline Smith, a wonderful pastor of ours from Wilton Baptist Church in Wilton, Connecticut, who is also serving as the chair-elect of our missions council. Caroline formerly served as field personnel in South Africa with CBF. We'll also hear from Jonathan and Tina Bailey, some of our wonderful field personnel who lead creative ministries in the arts and prisons in Bali, Indonesia. Then we'll hear from Jewel Cannon. She is one of our student.go mission, uh, mission interns who is serving alongside Rick and Lita Sample in the Bay Area of San Francisco. Um, uh, Jewel uh, serves as a tutor virtually to Karen children. Those would be refugee families from um, Myanmar or Burma. Um, and we're so grateful for the work of our student.goers. They're incredible and they really augment the work of our field personnel. So grateful to hear from Jewel tonight. But also Jennifer Gendrich, who comes as a representative of one of our Encourager churches in First Baptist Church of Carrollton. You know, Encourager churches covenant together with field personnel for ministry and mission. And I'm so excited to hear from Jennifer tonight. What a lineup. In this season of gratitude, um, I am so thankful myself to hear from such incredible people that contribute to God's mission through CBF. And I would be remiss at the outset of this conversation, not to mention as this season of gratitude gives way to a season of giving in our culture, to remind you to give a generous gift to the offering for global mission, which supports the work that you will hear about in this show. Um, you know, in this time of myriad natural disasters and a global pandemic, I can think of no greater time in my lifetime to give to the cause of the great commission of Jesus Christ. People need to hear the hope of Jesus and experience the hospitality of the body of Christ more now than ever. Won't you give generously? And now, without further ado, let's hear from our guests. Thanks so much for joining CBF Gathering and for joining the fellowship as part of God's movement in the world. Hi, we're Tina and Jonathan Bailey, CBF field personnel, now 25 years next month. It's really hard to believe it's been 25 years. We serve in Bali, Indonesia, where we work with artists and engage in the community and in prisons. Tina and I came back to the States from Bali last March because of the pandemic and we're still here seven months later. Our hope is to return to Bali before the end of the year so we can get back to ministry in 2021. We wanna thank you CBF for all that you've done for us, for taking a chance to allow two artists to live into their calling and to impact the people that we have had the privilege of working with around the world. Artists make objects of beauty, as we all know, but sometimes we don't always think about the people behind the art, and that is indeed our focus. And today we'd like to share a couple of stories with you of some of those people who are the creators of beauty in our lives. To begin with, Nyoman Darsana is the grandfather of the arts in the Bali Church. Musician, dancer, actor, and poet, 
Since his conversion to the Christian faith nearly 60 years ago, it's been his life's work to bring the riches of Balinese perspective into the tiny Christian community, so influenced by Western Christianity. His passion and our calling got woven together over the past 20 years, so that today, his studio is the center of most of our Balinese arts activities. Darsana is our mentor in the arts and in the faith. Kadek Astawa was a high school student the first time he performed with us. His Hindu teacher was a close friend of our mentor, and it was through him that Kadek came into the arts community that we established called Narwastu. A few years later, when the Balinese Gamelan Music Ensemble that I lead was preparing a set of newly composed works, Kadek joined again and became a permanent member. His outgoing nature and wicked sense of humor really helped our ensemble bridge the religious and ethnic diversity of our many community members. I knew he was a skilled traditional musician, but over time, I saw that he was also a leader. So in 2014, I asked Kadek to become one of our main teachers. It was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Since then, he's gotten married and started a family. I should also mention that Kadek is Hindu. Together, through Balinese music and dance, we've been able to support both Hindu and Christian communities. We think it's critical in our Bali setting to build bridges of understanding between disparate communities. The arts in Bali provide a setting for us to get to know our neighbor and to actually create something meaningful together. During the pandemic, Darsana and Kadek have continued to do the work in our absence. CBF's investment over so many years is paying off. Dayu is like family. I met Dayu in the art room when she was an inmate at Karobakan Prison. She's now free and she's finished her university degree and is now married. Since Dayu has become free, she's joined our Narwestu community and has become a key assistant to me by coming back into the prison. During this pandemic, while we're in the States, she's continued to make sure the programs run by getting the art supplies to the inmates when they need them. She's even making sure that our cats do not run out of food. Dion is a young Muslim Indonesian woman. She came into our life as part of the dance improv group. She began coming to the prison with me. She's also a jewelry designer and a dancer herself. Since becoming involved in the prison, she has also initiated her own projects inside the prison, helping the women as she's done with so many groups all over Indonesia, she's quite the entrepreneurial person. She also has joined our Gamelan group, playing Gamelan and performing with us. In closing, we would just like to ask for your prayers for artists. Tina and I will be going back to Bali and hopefully in a couple of months. And we know that Bali has been tremendously impacted by the pandemic. Artists particularly are susceptible really to um, a loss of income, the economic impact is enormous because they have no audience. So as we go back in, to Bali, we would appreciate your prayers uh, for us, but also for those to whom we minister.
CVF family, my name is Jewel Cannon and I serve as a second time student doc goer. As a true member of Gen Z, we like to say that's a flex and that indeed is a humble flex. I am from the Bronx, New York and I attend the illustrious Clark Atlanta University. I am a senior and my major is psychology. After graduation, I plan on going into the counseling field. I grew up in a very religious home. At the age of 16, I became very worldly and I strayed away from the gospel. I consider that time period as being the prodigal daughter. I was partying, I was drinking, I was just living a life that I did not grow up on. And I just completely turned away from the Bible, my upbringing. It wasn't until I went away to college and experienced many different things that I became more serious about my faith and my spiritual journey again. In Georgia, I was exposed to many different types of churches and many different worship experiences. I even joined about three different Bible study groups on campus, just trying to find the right fit and the right community for myself. At one of the Bible studies I attended, Taisha and Keenan gave a very thorough overview about CBF. I was immediately interested and I followed up with Taisha. After following up with Taisha, I became cognizant of an opportunity to study abroad, whether it was in the U.S. or outside of the U.S. After following up with Taisha, I applied for the summer internship program. Initially, I wanted to serve in Miami, but the Lord led me to serve virtually in Virginia with Sue Smith. That is when my interest in pastoral counseling and chaplaincy sparked. I am still grateful for her words of wisdom and her advice when it came to seminary school and chaplaincy. I still recall the sessions we had where she explained how broad pastoral counseling was and the duties of a pastoral counselor. This current semester, I am interning virtually in Fremont, California with Lita and Rick Sample. I am a virtual tutor first to about four different refugee families. The main thing that I am working on with them is getting them adjusted to the American education system. It is a little challenging because the way they did English and science and even math in their home countries is different than how we do it in the United States. But I believe with patience that we can achieve Additionally, I work with the Star Kids. The Star Kids program is a program that introduces elementary school age children to the Bible and we help them with their homework. The last thing that I am doing this current semester is teaching a Bible study class called Build a Story. This helps refugees with their English and story building. I typically start the class off with a familiar Bible story such as Noah's Ark or the creation story. Then we read the passages in the Bible and we take turns. And after that, we create a very fun story. Global Missions has impacted me in more ways than one. The first way Global Missions has impacted me is by opening my eyes to ministry around the globe. I realize the gospel is needed everywhere. And oftentimes, I think it's needed just outside of the United States, but the gospel is needed very much in different parts of the United States, too. Global Mission has exposed me to many different cultures, and although cultures may be different from my own, I realize that each culture is equally unique and important to the Great Commission and to spreading the gospel. Lastly, each field personnel has shown me why it is important to build, create, and sustain different communities in different parts of the world. My heart just warms when I think about my CBF family. I am grateful to have been exposed to and a part of this community. I am grateful for my encouragers and for my supervisors and for my peers that I have met along the way. I am grateful that everyone has supported me and have encouraged me to look into my talents and gifts to serve at my best ability. I am grateful for the networking and for all the references that I have received. The love and support that I have been given by CBF is unmatched. To have started my career in ministry under CBF means the world to me. Thank you, CBF. Hello, friends. We are so glad to be joining you in worship. I'm Jennifer Jindrick, the Associate Pastor of Children and Church Administration at First Baptist Carrollton, Georgia. I'm Henry Tyson. I'm Associate Pastor of Pastoral Care here at First Baptist Carrollton. And I'm Brenda Gale Tyson, and I'm a retired school teacher. We're here to talk tonight about the relationship between CBF field personnel, John and Tanya Parks, 
and First Baptist. That relationship began many years ago with the Tyson family. Yes, our friendship began in 1978, some 42 years ago, when Brenda Gale and I served alongside Tanya's parents, John and Connie Lepper, at First Baptist Church, Lebanon Junction, Kentucky. We've maintained and cultivated that friendship across the years, and of course we followed closely uh, Tanya's calling into ministry. Uh, when, when we learned in, 19, uh, in 2011 that uh, John and Tanya were being called as field personnel, uh, they reached out to us and to a host of friends and church families to join them as partners, to pray for them and to provide financial resources. And so we've enjoyed watching them become involved in their ministry with the Roma people in Slovakia. When Henry and BG retired and moved to Carrollton, John and Tanya asked if they could come and speak to our congregation about what they do in Košice, Slovakia. From that visit, a wonderful relationship began between First Baptist and John and Tanya Parks. In 2018, BG and I made the trip to Slovakia to see firsthand the ministry work of John and Tanya and the many ways that God was at work there. While we were there, we went to the local schools, watching as John and Tanya taught the children Bible stories through music and games. We also went to several Bible studies that they led. It was very evident that John and Tanya have formed important relationships with the Roma people during their eight years in Slovakia. When we returned home, we began planning a mission trip for the summer of 2020. 22 people from First Baptist made the commitment to partner with the parks. Although that mission trip never happened because of the pandemic, we found other creative ways to partner together. John and Tanya joined us in virtual vacation Bible school, making daily videos for the children that explain the history of Slovakia and the Roma people there. Tanya and Abigail and Caitlin even joined us one day over Zoom, letting the children ask all the questions about what it's like to be CBF field personnel. In February of 2020, First Baptist made the decision to become an encourager church to the parks. We signed a covenant with them, pledging our support for the next five years, promising to remember them in prayer, to partner with them in ministry, and to provide financial support as well. We look forward to seeing where God leads this relationship between First Baptist and the parks and partnering alongside them in ministry work. Hello everyone, I'm Caroline Smith. I'm the pastor at Wilton Baptist Church in Wilton, Connecticut. And I just wanna say how thankful I am for my CBF family, for each of you, for the communities of faith that make us who we are as CBF. I'm so thankful for the way I was raised in a CBF church. My foundations taught me that I could be whoever God called me to be and taught me to reach out to the neighbor nearest and furthest and to love them the way that God loves me and has shown me love. I'm thankful when I went to college, I was able to be a part of a CBF church. I was then ordained in the CBF church and I got married and my husband Josh and I served, we served as volunteers with CBF in Nairobi, Kenya and we served as Global Service Corps with CBF in Johannesburg, South Africa and then we served as field personnel with CBF in Johannesburg, South Africa. CBF has really guided me and nurtured me in my ministry throughout the years and for that I am so thankful. And when I say CBF, I mean you, I mean your churches, I mean the way that you have engaged with us and um, helped us to become and to help others become who God created them to be and to love in ways that you have shown us and that we can extend to others. When we were in South Africa, we had um, churches from all over the United States through CBF who were a part of our ministry, not only uh, through through financial um, support but also through your prayers through sending people volunteers we had short and long-term volunteers some who are still there in South Africa years later they never left 
no longer volunteers, but we are so thankful for the teams that came that helped us to do things that we couldn't do on our own and to encourage people and develop relationships with people and to help people to see what the church is and, and what we do together. And we're thankful for many of those relationships that continue both abroad and here at home. I now serve as the pastor at Wilton Baptist Church and we continue to be able to engage with CBF through global missions, through uh, volunteer opportunities that come up. And we can only do that as a small church because we get to join with our broader family. We can do so much more together than we ever could alone. And for small churches like ours, we're very grateful for that opportunity. My husband and I continue to be grateful for the ways that you feed our family and the way that you um, just love on us. I'm going to brag on one of our churches when we were in South Africa. They sent us a baby shower in a box when we had our youngest. And they had all of the things needed for, for a fun baby shower and they um, sent that to us. And just the ways, the creative ways uh, that we as CBF spread the love of Christ and the way that we can be who God has called us to be, encouraging each other. So I want to encourage you today to continue to love in the way that God has called you to. Continue to serve, and let's do that together as we do, okay? I thank you again, and thank you to CBF, each of you, for the way that you love us.